What is immersion and immersive technology? What does one require to experience immersion? Are all those images on the web, featuring huge headsets and gloves, a must-have in order to experience immersion? What is the cost to use it? Is immersion psychologically healthy for you? Will it affect your real life? Are there any legal or ethical problems involved with immersion? Is immersion limited to virtual worlds and games, or can it be used elsewhere? All these questions and more will be answered in this video and podcast chapter of the nine pillars of the metaverse, the definitive video and podcast series on the metaverse. Hi, I am Tara. That is not my real name, but the name I use in my wanderings through virtual worlds and the metaverse. I am a co-founder of If What If. Welcome to the If What If podcast channel. If What If, the company that combines virtual reality and artificial intelligence in education, consulting, courses and development. Our motto, dream it, imagine it, create it. The possibilities are endless. The entire series, The Nine Pillars of the Metaverse is, or will be available, as the chapters are released, in video on YouTube and Vimeo, and in podcast format, on all the major podcast directories. So we don't confuse you, we refer to if what if, as IWI, and I will be using that acronym throughout the podcast. As I explain immersion, we will be creating a lexicon of terms. Each term will be thoroughly explained, both in the video and podcast. Though this takes time, at IWI, we decided to be as thorough as possible in the Metaverse series, even if some listeners or viewers already know the material. To be fair to those who already know some of the fundamentals, our podcasts and videos are divided into chapters. So, if you feel you already know the information, you can skip to the chapter which interests you. However, we strongly advise you take the time to listen to the entire podcast or watch the entire video. We promise you that you will learn a great deal. Now, If What If is proud to present our new educational video series. The Nine Pillars of the Metaverse. The following three minutes is part of the introduction to all the videos and podcasts in this series. If you have already seen, or heard, another part in the Nine Pillars of the Metaverse series, you can jump to the next marked chapter. Sometimes the chapter markers do not appear in the videos or podcasts, so we place them in the description as well. If you have not yet seen or heard the introduction, we strongly advise you to do so at least once. These nine pillars are limitless, perpetual, immersion, social identity, anonymity, privacy, economics, digital currencies, and no central authority. Without a clear understanding of what each pillar refers to and accomplishes, to do business or to interact with the metaverse can become incredibly confusing and a daunting process. We have gotten used to dealing with a multitude of social networks and messaging apps along with their likes, shares and subscribes. Now, new terms have emerged, and some old terms have taken on new meaning. Along with the catch-all phrase, metaverse, we also hear the terms, virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality, virtual worlds, and mixed reality. Then we add artificial intelligence into the mix, and the whole process seems overwhelming. As if this were not enough, once we got used to paying online in a secure manner and adopting systems like Apple Pay, Google Pay, and all the others, we now suddenly encounter cryptocurrencies, with over 100 different coins to choose from and a whole new system of securing our payments. And now we are approaching the new frontier of exchange known as non-fungible tokens or NFT for short. NFTs are digital assets that represent ownership of media, often digital illustrations, profile pictures, or music. Is it any wonder then, that many people do not even know where to begin? Or that all the new terminology is so confusing? In our first chapter of this series, we explained the metaverse and the first two pillars. These are limitless and perpetual. 
This second chapter is entirely devoted to immersion, also known as immersive virtual reality. It is an extensive and sometimes complicated subject. Let us begin to explore immersion. The third pillar of the metaverse is immersion. This term has become increasingly common during the last few years. Though virtual world aficionados and those following the technology behind immersive technology are well aware of its possibilities. Yet, most newcomers to the metaverse or to virtual worlds are not totally familiar with what immersive technology implies. Nor do they understand the implications of immersion, what it can really do, and perhaps more importantly, what it still cannot do. So, in this part of the nine pillars of the universe, we will take an in-depth look at immersion and where it is currently at and where it will be in a couple of years. Most importantly, what immersive technology needs to achieve to earn the term, fully immersive. As we did in Chapter 1, in understanding the term metaverse, in order to understand immersion, let us first examine the term immersion. We will borrow a bit from Wikipedia, a bit from common knowledge, a bit from academics, and a lot from the experience of IWI in these technologies, in order to pin down a working definition. The term immersive is a metaphoric use of the experience of submersion. Think of being entirely submerged in the ocean. However, immersion is applied to a representation of reality, which is fiction or a simulation of reality. Immersion can also be defined as a state of consciousness, where a visitor or immersant has awareness of their physical self and is transformed by being surrounded in an artificial environment. Therefore immersion is not taking place in our reality, but it is an added dimension, artificially introduced into our brains to simulate or enhance reality. Immersion is used for describing a partial or complete suspension of disbelief, enabling action or reaction to stimulations encountered in a virtual or artistic environment. The greater the suspension of disbelief, the greater the degree of presence can be achieved. The crucial word here is presence, which we will discuss in depth in a few minutes. As we can see, there is a connection between submersion and immersion. Indeed, this is not a coincidence. When you submerge yourself underwater, you are basically covered with water or actually immersed in the water. Immersion implies you are submerged and covered within virtual reality and the virtual world you are visiting. And just like you can feel and see the water, you will be able to feel, hear, see, and experience that virtual world. Immersion is about our five senses and what they perceive to be happening. In order to achieve immersion, our senses must be essentially fooled by associating virtual reality with real sensations. It is obvious that without involving some or all of our senses, immersion would be impossible. These five senses are as follows. They are vision, associated with the eye. Hearing, associated with the ear. Touch, associated with the skin. Smell, associated with the nose. Taste, associated with the mouth. With immersion and immersive technologies, we would categorize these as follows. Sight becomes immersive with panoramic 3D displays. This is known as visual. Sound becomes immersive with surround sound acoustics. This is known as auditory. Touch becomes immersive with haptics and force feedback. This is known as tactile. Smell, known as olfactory, and taste, known as gustation, are in a different category when it comes to immersion. We will discuss the difficulties and solutions regarding smell and taste in a few minutes. We usually associate touch with our fingers and hands, though interestingly enough, it is the one sense which covers or submerges our entire body. Sight and sound are the two senses which were immediately targeted by immersive technology. Sound, especially with the achievements in sound technology over the past century, was the easiest to tackle. Sound waves emit from speakers or a headset. The ideal within immersion is that the only sound you can or will hear are those that come from your virtual world. 
This is the first sense that is most easily isolated and then channeled, especially in a 3D experience. Indeed, most of us have experienced this as we listen to music with our earbuds. At that moment, all else disappears and we drown ourselves in the sound of our favorite music. In essence, this is a form of immersion, but only with one sense. The sense of sound. Sight is a bit different, as we must discuss sight within a two-dimensional and two-plus-dimensional and a 3D environment. When we look at our television, phone, tablet, or computer screen we are essentially in a 2D environment. Our eyes view a flat picture or video, and we involve ourselves in the image or movie that is taking place on the screen. It certainly can affect us and cause many emotions. But the visual we are staring at in our 3D environment is actually portrayed in two dimensions. Imagine standing in front of a Da Vinci painting. It is two-dimensional. Yet, anyone who has had such an experience will tell you, the magic of Da Vinci is that somehow, the painting draws your whole soul into it. This is our mind working with our sight, causing us to experience something that is intangible. However, put that same painting on a computer screen and then look at it, the odds are you will not have the same experience. Immersion by sight is much more sensitive to your surroundings. Many virtual worlds attempt to give the individual a two-plus dimensional experience. They combine the 2D scene appearing on the screen with a complete isolation of your hearing from anything else, except that which is coming from the virtual world. If hearing is dominated by the virtual world, then even with the 2D environment on your screen, you are transported in that 2D plus world. The images on the screen take a greater power over your senses at that moment, immersing you into a more virtual experience. Compare our 2D plus experience with that of the Da Vinci painting and what it does to your sense of sight and inner emotions. Two more essential factors of immersion have emerged here. One, this combination of senses is critical to immersion actually working. And second, keep in mind our mention of emotions, another critical, though subjective factor in immersion and immersive technologies. However, true 3D immersion with sight requires technology. We are attempting to turn a flat 2D screen into a 3D environment. Neither our eyes nor any other sense can do that to a full extent. However, hardware combined with software can allow you to experience that 2D world as you would in your actual world, using your sight. In other words, with the use of technology, we can transform within our brain and our perceptions that 2D environment into a 3D environment. Remember, the goal of immersive virtual reality is to completely immerse the user inside the computer-generated world. This gives an impression to the user that they have stepped inside the synthetic world. To achieve this with sight, we can either use head-mounted displays, known by the acronym HMD, or multiple projections, which can produce holograms. Holograms are not within the parameters of our discussion, as they are three-dimensional projections into our reality. We are going in the opposite direction, moving ourselves into the virtual world. HMD technology allows virtual reality to be projected to the eyes or visual and allows users to focus on it without any distraction. So, once you have your headset and headphones, a degree of immersion will take place. You will be able to step inside that virtual world and it will seem as if it is reality. Or almost. Because we have not yet involved touch, smell and taste. And without these, the immersive experience will never be complete. Have you ever been to a concert where the music seems to be rebounding off the walls into your bones? In technology, we call this haptic feedback, where you actually feel what you hear. Your sense of hearing and your sense of touch are essentially combined. Today we have many devices to provide haptic feedback from sound. These allow involvement of your sense of hearing and your sense of touch to be immersed, while your sight tells you that your reality is the virtual world you have stepped into. To further enhance touch, 
there are gloves in either complete or partial bodysuits to generate that haptic feedback. The sound and visual combine, and the software makes an educated guess, based upon big data, what you should actually be feeling with your sense of touch. With your hands and fingers, and over your entire body. Critical importance here is not to confuse feeling with touch and feeling with emotions. They are two entirely different things. We have now covered sound, sight, and to some extent touch. Remember, when it comes to touch, your whole body is involved, not just your fingers. Paradoxically, touch is the most physical of all the senses, while it also is the one that is most subjective. Therefore, touch may prove to be the most difficult sense from sound, sight and touch with which to achieve complete immersion. Two other senses remain. Smell and taste. The most difficult ones with which to achieve immersion. If you walk into a field of wildflowers and wild berries in your virtual world, you may be able to see them in three dimensions. You may also hear the wind or rain with your headphones, and even feel the rain in your face or the wind at your back with haptic feedback. However, you will not be able to smell those flowers nor taste the wild berries growing all over the field. These two senses require olfactory and gustation glands. In the near future, there may be a way around this. Above, I discussed how haptic feedback involves your sense of touch and is combined with your sense of hearing. There may be a way to combine that sense of touch and your sense of smell and taste. In other words, just as your sense of sound invades your sense of touch, it may be possible to fool our taste and smell in the same way. We will be able to tell the brain, based upon the environment and what you see, and hear, and feel, what you should taste and what you should smell. However, currently, this technology is not available to the public. Therefore, immersion may be incredibly advanced, but it is still not complete. It is still not capable of totally engulfing the individual in a virtual world, and turn that virtual world into a true competitor with actual reality. To summarize this section, our five senses are what immersion attempts to kidnap through technology. Sound and sight are the first two, which can cause the individual to be engulfed in 3D environment within virtual reality. Touch can be hijacked as well with use of technology. Touch also seems to play an integral part with all the senses. It seems to fluidly travel and intertwine with the other four senses. For the moment, taste and smell are beyond our capabilities of immersion. They are the most difficult to hijack and create true virtual real sensations. We have already mentioned the term presence. Now let us discover what this term implies in immersion and how it affects us. Presence may still offer us a complete immersive experience, even without the total involvement of our five senses. In our use of the term presence, it is derived from the shortening of the original term, telepresence. This is a phenomenon enabling people to interact with and feel connected to the world outside their physical bodies via technology. Many dystopian and futuristic movies have presence as a central theme. It is defined as a person's subjective sensation of being in a scene depicted by a medium, usually virtual in nature. Most designers focus on the technology used to create a high-fidelity virtual environment. However, the human factors involved in achieving a state of presence must be taken into account as well. It is the subjective perception, although generated by and filtered through human-made technology, that ultimately determines the successful attainment of presence. The term subjective is critical here. The senses can be fooled or enhanced, but the amount of immersion in individual experiences will always be determined by the subjective mindset of the individual. In other words, immersion is not a science which is equal for everyone. The degree of immersion will always be subjective. Even if one has all the glasses, headsets, and haptic feedback, some individuals will resist immersion, despite a 3D environment. Others will accept it with open arms. 
presence is critical here, as it determines the degree of immersion. This next section deals with biological immersive technology used to create the immersive experience. Remember how your sense of hearing can be combined with your sense of touch. The fluidity of your sense of touch and what you physically feel can also manipulate what you emotionally feel. Returning to our Da Vinci painting, your emotional feelings are so overwhelmed that you can be transported into a different realm just by looking at a painting. If you follow our IWI podcasts on artificial intelligence, you will know we sometimes quote from our favorite authors. Walter Isaacson and Amy Webb are two authors we recommend to all our clients and at all our seminars. In her latest book, The Genesis Machine, our quest to rewrite life in the age of synthetic biology, recently published by Public Affairs, Amy Webb collaborated with Andrew Hessel to produce an incredible, thought-provoking work. While the book is not about immersion technology, but as the title says, synthetic biology, it is still very applicable to our topic at hand. Let us quote from a small section in the book. In 2021, scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California, grew macaque monkey embryos that were injected with human stem cells. They were allowed to grow for 20 days before being destroyed. This wasn't a rat and a mouse. This experiment involved two closely related primates. There is a term for these hybrid life forms. Chimeras, named after the fire-breathing monster of Greek mythology that was part lion, part goat, and part serpent. The scientists conducting these studies hope that part, human chimeras, like those being developed at the Salk Institute, could be used someday to study various medical conditions, or to grow organs needed for transplantation. Another key way that chimeras will be used, is to study biological development. Human monkey chimeras will be developed to research the brain, in order to better understand Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. It is mind-boggling how far science, technology, and biology have come. If you understand the creation of the chimera, then you will follow the next part. In immersion, we have been concentrating on the technology. The hardware, the software, the ability to affect our senses and emotions. However, there may exist another method, a biological one, that can create immersion. We may be able, or actually already can, induce sensations that make up the virtual reality, by using the nervous system directly. In conventional biology, we interact with everyday life through the nervous system. We receive all input from all the senses as nerve impulses. This input gives your neurons a feeling of heightened sensation. To a small extent, we can compare endorphins to a biological stimulation of our bodies. Endorphins are released by a biological process and change the way we react. Endorphins can inhibit pain and also create a sense of well-being or even euphoria. In this same way, we can expose the human body to what we will call for now, immersive endorphins. The immersive system would subject the user to artificially stimulated nerve impulses. The system would receive the natural nerve impulse outputs and process them, allowing the user to interact with the virtual reality. Natural impulses between the body and central nervous system would need to be carefully monitored. This could be done by blocking out natural impulses using nanorobots, which attach themselves to the brain wiring. While receiving the digital impulses from virtual worlds, they could be sent into the wiring of the brain. A feedback system between the user and the computer, which stores the information would also be required. All users are subject to presence, which is subjective, so careful and continuous monitoring of the specific user is critical for the right stimulation. Or we could chemically induce immersive endorphins with a pill that would be calibrated for the individual wishing to experience virtual reality. Such techniques would supply the user with a complete immersive experience and slowly do away with the heavy, technological devices we use today. These processes are still experimental and of course, require medical and legal permission to use. If we can already create the chimera, 
then we are already on the path to creating specific enzymes and immersive endorphins to accomplish this. Subjectivity will no longer be a factor, as each individual will have a system carefully calibrated to their physical and emotional circumstances. Immersion will be complete and total. What are some of the psychological and legal ramifications of immersion? There are beyond doubt, enormous psychological ramifications attached to immersive technology. IWI has covered quite a few of them in our videos and podcasts, entitled, What is Reality? Who am I? And Split Personalities in Virtual Reality. Of course, immersion takes the problems mentioned in those podcasts and videos to a whole new stratosphere. Immersion, for those whose subjective personalities are addictive, can cause an individual to be lost in virtual reality. They will find it difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish between the virtual and real. This will cause damage to the psyche and possibly create a split personality. Legal problems also abound. There has already been a case of inappropriate touching in virtual worlds, forcing Facebook to create a safe area that can be created by an avatar to protect their personal space. But you say, it is just an avatar. Bits and bytes and not real. Once you add immersion into the mix, either two-dimensional plus or 3D, the feedback to the brain, visual, hearing and touch is all real. Therefore, interactions become real. Touch becomes authentic. Feelings and emotions are deep and true. Hearing is immersive. Sight is in three dimensions and allows for a synthetic experience that mimics actual reality. Our legal systems are not anywhere near the sophistication required to handle these issues. Predators, sexual harassment, stalking, stolen identities, and the combination of anonymity, another pillar in the metaverse, are all problematic. Our podcast on privacy and anonymity addresses this very subject. Immersion is not limited to virtual worlds and gaming. Immersion can and should be used in almost all fields of knowledge and progress. It does not take a great deal of imagination to discover how much immersion can help with medical science. Operations would look and be much different and more exact. Education is another area which would greatly benefit from immersive technology. Though in education, it is critically important to maintain an actual social environment. Not just a virtual one. There is actually no field of endeavor that cannot benefit from immersion and immersive technology. At IWI, we do not recommend specific devices to anyone besides our clients. Currently, to encompass your body in virtual reality headsets for touch, and great headphones that eliminate all other sound and add to that a device for haptic feedback can cost thousands of dollars. Of course, this all depends on the make and model you are purchasing. Do not forget this is not enough. You will need an excellent computer with an excellent graphics card and a great deal of memory and a fantastic internet connection to make this all happen. However, even with a fairly decent computer and the baseline visual headset, Coupled with cheap headphones, one can have a fairly decent immersive experience. The advances in immersive technology are now measured in weeks, not in months or years. As in all technology, the breakthroughs and progress, especially coupled with AI, are coming at us with a dizzying rate. The cell phone you are used to carrying around in your back pocket will soon go the way of the dinosaur. The question will not be how large or small your screen is, nor how fantastic the camera is, but how that one small, almost infinitesimal chip will be placed on a person to allow for all modes of communication. Huge virtual reality headsets will turn into glasses and contact lenses. Speakers already became headsets and then earbuds. Soon, the quality of those earbuds will be able to enhance your hearing to the level of your brain assimilating every nuance. And their size will shrink to almost nothing. They will also contain haptic feedback, allowing the immersive experience for sight, sound, and touch to be accomplished with a pair of contact lenses and earbuds. Until the earbud can contain haptic feedback 
to deal with your sense of touch, you will not require gloves and a bodysuit, but rather one small device, which will be calibrated with your body. To summarize, this podcast and video have covered what immersion actually means and what is required to achieve it. Point number one. Explaining the term immersion and what it means and refers to. Point number two. Delving deep into the five senses. In the section on the five senses, we discovered that touch is the most physical sense, yet most fluid and sight, sound and touch are intertwined. We also discovered that taste and smell are the most difficult senses to deal with in a completely immersive experience. Point number three. The terminology of presence and the need to take into account subjectivity and the emotional status of the individual entering virtual reality. Without doing so, all the hardware and software available will not induce the desired reactions or impact. Point number four. Introducing the term immersive endorphins, which apply to the biological possibilities of creating an immersive experience. Point number five. A short discussion of the psychological and legal ramifications of immersion. This subject deserves an in-depth dive on its own. Point number six. A brief look at the possibilities of immersive technology outside of virtual worlds and gaming. Point number seven. What are the costs involved to create an immersive experience for an individual? And finally, point number eight dealing with the advances in technology that await us. The nine pillars of the Metaverse video and podcast series was created by If What If, the company that combines virtual reality and artificial intelligence in education, consulting, courses and development. Our motto, dream it, imagine it, create it. The possibilities are endless. You can find If What If on all the major social media networks or contact us at info at ifwhatif.com. This podcast is also available on most major podcast directories and on our YouTube and Vimeo channels in full-length video formats. Don't forget to subscribe to the If What If channel on your favorite podcast directory or on YouTube and Vimeo. Please see the links in the description for all our social media channels and how to contact us. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. It is greatly appreciated. Have an awesome day. If what if would like to thank all the metaverse, virtual world, and second life photographers involved in our projects. And to Poco, our resident virtual world and metaverse photographer, who scours the metaverse to find the most incredible images and with her exceptional talent, turns them into works of art. All her work can be found at www.flickr.com slash people slash poco9. Thanks for use of her images goes to master photographer, Violetta Rain. Thanks for use of their images go to three girls in SL, Fenny, Liz, and Leandra. Thanks for use of her images goes to Yennefer, involved in many RPG, virtual world, and photography projects. Thanks also goes to Inara Pei and Miru, Second Life photographers, who graciously allow reuse of their Flickr photos. Links to all our photographers are in the description attached to this video. All other photos are taken from pixabay.com or unsplash.com and are free to use for commercial purposes.